Hey guys, so I'm going to do a quick video on six different ways that you guys can improve your round dory um, for this new year. So some ideas, some tips for you to go through there. Now, the most important thing to remember is our mindset. Many people will practice uchikomi different ways. So they'll do static uchikomi, moving uchikomi, um, speed uchikomi, you know, they'll practice on their weak side. But when it comes to round dory, what happens is actually most people or many people will just practice fighting. Okay, there won't be any real aims, objectives, and there's definitely a much better way to get a more productive way of training. Okay, so there's six real real areas. So nice and quickly, I'll go over them and they'll go into a bit more detail. So the time and tempo, gripping, space and distance control. We also need to think about the scenarios, different styles of opponents, and then fighting with one objective, okay? So as a quick little list, that's six ideas. But let's go into a little bit more. So a lot of people will do round dories to different times, different tempos, okay? So they might do three minute round dories, four minute round dories, five minute round dories, depending on their, how long they've practiced or how fit they are, okay? But actually what we need to do as well is change our tempo. So for example, um, when I trained out in Japan years ago, most of the time there were long practices, 10 minute practices, and it very much suited the style of fighting, allowing plenty of time for preparation to set up, work on the gripping, um, but it was generally a lot, sm a, lot, a lot slower pace, okay? So actually changing the pace of your round dory is really important. And then I know when we come back from Japan, actually, for fighting in Europe, it, it wasn't that useful for us, okay, because we fought slightly differently. So we definitely had periods of much shorter practices, minute, two minutes long, but where the tempo was much higher, firing a lot more, um, and yeah, just basically going a lot harder in our training. So changing your time and tempo, really, really important when you're practicing. So, and also don't be afraid as well to do one round fast, one round slow, and vary that within a practice. It doesn't all have to be one minute practices or all five minute practices. You can change that within the course of your round dory, making sure that you're, you're speeding up, slowing down as and when you need. It's also as well, if you know you're, uh, maybe you're a coach and you've got certain players that, um, don't particularly um, like engaging that much. They're, they're a bit slower. It's a way of speeding them up by reducing the time limit, making sure that they're working a little bit harder, okay? So number two, gripping. Now, gripping, I think can be quite controversial, but for me, actually, gripping is a really, really important part. And now, the reason why I say gripping is because many people think about gripping and training and judo. They want to get hold of someone, and throw them, okay? They want to develop their throws, which is good in theory. But especially in Europe, judo's not done like that, okay? French, Italians, Germans, there's a huge, huge emphasis on gripping, winning the grips, okay? And also, if we take it back, okay? We take it back for, for, for young children. Children develop at different rates, different speeds. So actually, being able to perform an Uchimata or a Haragoshi or a te one of the, the more demand, physically demanding techniques actually requires a lot of strength, a lot of body control, and, and it's quite tricky. And children that aren't as far along in their maturation, so going through puberty and their body changing, if they're physically not as strong or as capable, maybe they're not quite as coordinated, they're going to really struggle to be able to do those techniques. But things that they can do is learn gripping patterns, they can learn um, which hand to grab where, when, you know, keeping hold of a sleeve, like... Um, I have many people say to me about how do I get stronger at gripping? Well, practice gripping more. I remember once my judo coach, absolutely phenomenal, Luke Presley, who's so good at pinning a sleeve, like he would just pin your sleeve. And I never once think I broke the sleeve off only to look down to see that he still had my sleeve, but it was no longer attached to my judo jacket. Okay, so thinking about gripping is really, really important within your practice as well. And as I said, it can be something that will encourage children to to focus on. It's, a, it's an easy way or a better way of putting it. It's a great leveler, 
okay, for, for children. It's hard and it takes time to develop your judo techniques and that's a period of 10, 15, 20 years of developing all those skills, okay? But gripping is something that they can introduce to their round dory, keep them safe, gives them a different aspect to focus on rather than just being thrown all the time. So gripping is a really, really important skill to learn. Number three, space and distance control. Seems really simple, but actually practicing uh, both scenarios. So it could be one person's trying to close the distance, one person's trying to create the distance. Now, generally, if you're attacking, you're trying to close the space, you're trying to throw someone. If you're defending, you're trying to create that space. Changing who can do what will add a great element to your round dory practice, but it'll encourage you to develop those skills, both actually uh, attacking and defending. But you can also then change it to both people in close. So you can take more of a wrestling grip or you can come round the belt and you can hold on. You can pull your partner in nice and strong and then from there engage. And this builds up a real strong core strength, okay? And you're able to then react to techniques, avoid techniques. Now with these, obviously it depends on the skill level that you're working with, but it's a really, really important way of practicing judo too and varying how you, how you are practicing. We've also got scenario training. This needs to be done lots, especially if you're a competitive player um, and using it as a way of reviewing things that you've done previously or tournaments you've been in previously. So you, you can practice being upper school, down a school. OK, if you're upper score, you could say, right, there's one minute to go. You're winning by Wazari. Uh, you've got to make sure you don't get penalised. OK, so ensuring that you've got that scenario set. One person knows that they're down a score. They need to get that score back. The other person knows they're up and they need to maintain that score without doing something that's going to get them disqualified. OK, or thrown. That's really, really simple. And it's just by setting scenarios, you can also use um, the edge, okay? So you could use the edge to create reactions. You could say you're against an opposite side of the opponent. There's so many things that you can build into that. You could be down two scores, uh, two Shido, sorry. Um, you could set a scenario that you're against somebody who does lots of drop techniques. So they're trying to break preparation. How do you fight that? And by adding that in, that also builds your judo knowledge and it builds the understanding around it, which then once again will help long term in your development and improve. And it won't be such a shock when you get back to that situation again in round in competition. Sorry. So these are things that you really need to think about when when you're practicing. Also, fight against different styles. Now, not everybody's going to be able to travel the world. You're not everybody's going to be able to train in Japan, Russia, Korea. But everybody in your judo club will fight slightly differently and making yourself practice against the people that you don't like practicing against, but setting yourself targets. So for example, if you're against somebody who loves doing uh, Tanya Toshi, so the whole practice, they'll wait for you to turn, they'll do Tanya Toshi. Well, for you, your, your whole thing is, can you do Ashiwaza? Can you fight Ashiwaza and absolutely remove that Tanya Toshi threat? OK, do they just do drop techniques? How do you deal with that? Do they like to throw their arm deep? Do they like to pull you in around the waist? Setting up challenges. And even if the people on, on your mat don't practice like that, you can set those up as well in the same way as you'd set up the scenarios. OK, so ensuring that you fight people who fight differently, right handed, left handed. Do they take a defensive posture? Are they coming forwards? These are really, really good ways to start getting that input, that different styles of training to help you improve your judo that much faster, okay? Now, the last one, fighting with one objective. This one, for me, is actually really important if you're trying to develop your judo. So I have, especially beginner students or intermediate students, they say, I want to get better at a certain technique, okay? They want to be able to do this one technique, well, or a strategy it might be. Well, what you need to do, and they, they'll generally ask me what technique should they do with it, and the easiest way to find out is by trying to use that one technique in your randori, okay? You go out, you just try and do it. You either throw someone, they counter you, it doesn't work, but what you'll do is you'll start getting some reactions, you'll start getting some ideas, and... All the time you're working on that one technique, you'll then start realizing, well, every time I do this entry, this happens. Well, there's an answer to that. So the second technique must be this. 
all right? And that's a, you know, you'll see most judo players, most top level judo players, they'll have a main technique that they like to do and then they'll have complementary techniques around that. And that is where they build their judo tree, their foundation, because the one technique that they want to succeed with will cause their partners to react in a certain way. Now, if they're an opposite side or a same sider, they might react differently. If they're tall, if they're short, they might react differently. If they're from Japan, if they're from France, they might react differently because their experiences are different. So by using that one technique that one strategy over and over again you'll get a lot more input on what you should do next and that's where you'll build out your judo tree okay so they're just some easy easy things that you could do in your randori to help you so time and tempo we need gripping, change our gripping up uh, space and distance control also we need scenario setting up different styles of opponents, and then fighting with one objective, okay? Now, I hope, sorry, actually, it looks like I'm in, I am actually in my storage container. So we've got maps all stored. So it does look a bit ropey, but I hope the, the value from this, let me know how you change your round dory styles. What do you do? What's your aims for, for 2023 to improve your judo? But yeah, just let me know how you're getting on, and please feel free to comment below, and make sure you subscribe to the channel too.